This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha, your favorite channel on YouTube. And this week we've got another great story for you. You can see the title right on your screen. The guy says, my first marriage nightmare, lies, cheating, fraud, and the ultimate heartbreak. It's an experience that provides many life lessons. Now let's get into the story. But before we do, I want to point out the moral of the story right up front. Never rush into a relationship. Give yourself plenty of time for vetting to ensure you know who she really is. Preparation is the key to success. Now, let's get on with the story. And you can see this was posted back on May 7th of 2021. He starts off by saying, I thought I'd post this to alert young men to the dangers of rushing into marriage. Let me first say I recognize my ex-wife likely had some unresolved mental issue back then that caused her psychotic behavior. I hope for her sake and for that of her children that she is now well. With that said, my experience with her was nothing short of a nightmare. This started back in July of 2009 when I met her at the annual auto show in our area. She was hired as a model by one of the car companies to look pretty, pass out literature, and pull people into their area to talk about vehicles. She was so hot, I was immediately under her spell. After mauling around the area, I went back and asked her out on the spot. And to my surprise, she said okay. On our first date, we just went for a drink and we talked for nearly three hours. On our next date, we went out to dinner. Then I took her for a walk in a local park where we shared an ice cream sundae. At the end of the date, I took her back to her apartment and she invited me in. As soon as we entered her apartment, she closed the door and put her arms around my neck and started kissing me. And from there, things happened fast. I'll spare the details, but you know what I'm talking about. From that point on, we spent every night together at either her place or mine. And 11 weeks later, she ended up pregnant. I was nervous, but so in love. Looking back on it now, it was probably lust or a combination of lust and love. But whatever it was, I was under her spell. That's never a good place to be, gentlemen. You can see this guy was so under her spell that he gets into a physical relationship with her right out of the gate and doesn't use protection. I immediately proposed to her and she said yes. So now here's another story where a guy knows a woman for less than 90 days and he's already proposing marriage to her. What are you thinking about, dude? Now keep in mind, at this point, neither of us had met each other's families, or even friends for that matter. Our first introductions with each set of parents went something like this. Yeah, I want to hear this. Hi, Mom and Dad. I want to introduce you to blank. We've been dating for the past two months. We then told our parents to take a deep breath and relax, and then we told them, we are pregnant and are getting married. Uh, no, your girlfriend is pregnant. You're not pregnant. Of course, our parents were shocked and very upset by this, and neither set of parents wanted us to go forward with marriage. Oh, by the way, at the time I was 21, and she had just turned 20. I had been working in retail for, four, for nearly four years and built myself up to an assistant manager, and my girlfriend didn't have a steady job, surprise, but was doing contract modeling work and also did food sampling in grocery stores. So she was just picking up gigs here and there, it looks like. 
For weeks, our parents tried to convince us to let things rest before we rushed into marriage, but we didn't. I moved her into my apartment, paid the cancellation fee on her place, and took over the payments on her car. Mistake, mistake, mistake. This guy is just, you know, making mistake after mistake. Unbelievable. A month later, we got our marriage license, and a week after that, we were married by the mayor. Our parents threw us a really nice reception dinner and even hired a DJ. We had about 50 family members and close friends in attendance. It was the best time. Five months later, my first son was born, and I was so proud. I couldn't believe I could ever love someone as much as I loved that kid and his mom. My focus was working hard and making money to support my family, which required long hours at work. Things paid off for me, and a year later, I was promoted to store manager with a nice increase in salary plus bonuses. Well, good for him. You can see he didn't go to college. He just started working retail, it looks like, when he was like 17 years old. And he steadily built himself up, and now he's in a management position, and he's getting salary and bonuses. I tip my hat to the guy. Life was good, and right after I got promoted, we found out my wife was pregnant. I, again, was so excited about having another child, and we celebrated with family. By this time, both of our families were totally blended, and we were all like one big happy family. It was great. I was living my dream and couldn't be happier. Our second child was born and it was another boy. Things were going so well and my happiness level was off the charts at this point. Then everything came crashing down on September 16th of 2012. It was a beautiful late summer day and I thought I would take the afternoon off and surprise my wife. To keep the surprise, I talked to her just before leaving the store and told her I'd be home around 6 p.m. She sounded disappointed, and we talked next about what she was going to fix for supper. So it sounds like just a normal, you know, conversation here between a husband and wife. I left the store a little after 1 p.m. and stopped by a local grocery and bought a bouquet of flowers and headed home. When I got home, I noticed a car parked in front of our apartment, right beside my wife's car, with the rest of the lot empty. I don't know why, but I instantly had a bad feeling. Something wasn't right here. I just talked to her, and she said nothing about someone stopping by, and I didn't recognize the car. I parked down the lot from our place and walked up to our front door. It was a beautiful day, so my wife had the living room windows open. And as I got closer, I heard voices coming from the window. I clearly heard my wife giggling and talking to a man. Ugh. I next moved to unlock the door but didn't. Something told me to go back near that window and listen. And when I did, I heard my wife and this guy making ooing and aahing and mmm sounds. They weren't engaged in the act yet, but were getting close. I was out of my mind with rage and about to barge into the house to beat the living daylights out of this punk. But again, something stopped me before I put the key in the door. Standing there, I decided to call 911 instead. So now here's another guy engaging the police. And when I first heard the first story where a guy did that, I said, man, why would you do that? But the more I thought about it, it's probably a good idea because your anger level is so high at that point, you may do something really stupid that's going to get you into a lot of trouble. Also, by having the police there, you've got another witness. So you can't be falsely accused by your wife. So it probably makes sense if you live in a community where you have a police force that would respond to something like that. Now, if you live in a big city, they don't even respond to serious crimes there, so you're out of luck. But if you live in a small town or a suburb, it's probably a good idea. And if you're not going to engage them, then you should have a witness with you. He says, I walked away from the windows not to be heard. I told the operator who I was, gave my address, and explained why I was calling. The operator asked what was my emergency. 
And I told her I was about to confront my wife and her lover and was afraid things would go poorly. She told me to be calm and to not do anything rash that I would regret later. I appreciated her talking to me as it calmed me down a little. She offered to stay on the phone until the policeman arrived, but I told her I'd be okay. I waited a couple minutes and the officer hadn't arrived yet, so I decided to open the door and walk in on them with the flowers in hand. Oh my gosh, what a sight. As I opened the door, my wife and her lover jumped off the couch, fully naked. My wife dashed back to our bedroom and slammed the door as this scrawny naked guy stood in front of me. I was standing between him and his clothes and I just started yelling at him at the top of my lungs. He was silent and had a petrified look on his face. I was about to start smashing him. But thankfully, before I did anything stupid, the officer knocked on the door and I let him in. As I stepped away, the guy ran over and nervously started putting on his clothes. I talked to the officer and thanked him for coming and told the officer this man was intruding in my home and I wanted him to be taken away and arrested. The officer told me to calm down and let him ask the guy a few questions. The first question he asked him was what he was doing in my apartment. The guy replied he was there visiting my wife. The officer next asked if he was invited in and the guy said yes. The officer then asked me if my wife was present and I told him she was in the bedroom. I went and knocked on the door and called out to my wife to come out, but she didn't answer. I knocked again and she said she wasn't coming out and that she was sorry. She was hard sob crying at this point. With this, the officer called out to my wife and said, Mrs. Blank, I need you to come out of the bedroom for a minute as I just have a couple questions for you. As he said this, I heard the baby crying in our kid's bedroom and walked in and picked him up and started to console him. So his wife was out there on the couch doing this guy while their little baby was in his crib. Man, that is just totally disgusting. My wife then came out of the bedroom fully dressed, looking down and crying. The officer asked her her name and she gave it. He then asked her if she invited Mr. Blank into our apartment. She was quiet and didn't say anything. He then asked her again saying he needed to know before he could release the guy. My wife replied no, so she's saying she didn't invite him in. The officer repeated, ma'am, you're saying you did not invite this gentleman into your home and he is trespassing? With this, she started crying and again didn't answer. The police officer spoke firmly and again asked her to respond yes or no. This time she admitted that he was a friend and that she had invited him in. So she was going to throw that guy under the bus as well. The officer then asked my wife and I if this was the apartment we shared together and we confirmed that it was. He then explained that since the guy was an invited guest, no crime was committed. He then asked the guy to leave, which he quickly did without saying anything but thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm sure that guy just wanted to get the heck out of there. It was a surreal scene with me holding the baby, my wife crying, her lover slipping out the door, and the officer filling out his report. I'll never forget how I felt. The officer suggested to me that it would be best for one of us to leave the residence. I told him I would be leaving, but asked if he could stay until I could pack some things, and he agreed. Hearing this, my wife became hysterical. Okay, here's another wayward wife becoming hysterical. She latched on to me and started begging me not to go. I was still holding the baby, and the officer told her to back away, which she eventually did. She then sat curled up in a ball crying on the same couch where she was just blanking another man. So she was there sitting on that couch where she was just laying 15 minutes ago. While packing, I called our mothers, told them what happened, and asked them to come over as soon as possible. 
They both arrived within 10 minutes. Seeing them, my wife started repeating, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She was saying this over and over. My mom had my toddler son with her, and he asked why mommy was crying, which broke my heart. I told my wife and her mother that I was taking both kids with me as my wife was unfit and we would be staying with my parents. Good for you. That's smart. Just proactively take your kids with you. My wife pleaded with me to stay, but I refused. Then my mom and I, the two kids, and the officer left the apartment. It was the darkest day of my life. My wife called nonstop, ugly begging me to come home, but I ignored her. A few days later, I met with her at my parents' house. I sent the kids to her parents and had my parents on standby in another room as witnesses. That's smart. Always have witnesses when you're meeting with a wayward wife or a girlfriend that's cheating on you or that has cheated on you because you don't know what kind of stories they're going to make up and they could... uh, you know, say something false, make up a false accusation against you, and you want to avoid that. So it's always smart to have witnesses like he's having here. Now, we're at a point in this story where I want to remind you, if you're liking what you hear, hit that like button. That'll help get this video seen by people all over the world and move it up on the YouTube algorithm. So let's get back into the story now. I asked her who this guy was, when and how she met him, how long they had been having S, how many times, and other questions along those lines. My wife just started crying again and telling me she was so sorry and how much she loved me. All the normal bull you get from a cheater. Yeah, it's pretty consistent here. You've seen from all these stories. The first thing they do is they, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. And then they start crying. And then they say, oh, I love you and only you. Let me tell you something, guys. That is complete bull, just like this guy says. She then started offering me some limited info, and I knew immediately she was lying. She told me this was their first and only time. What did I say on last week's video? I said if you bust one of these women in the act of cheating, they're going to say one of two things. They're going to say, oh, this was my first time with this guy. I'd never done anything like this before. Or they're going to say, Oh, you know what? We were together a couple of times before, but this was going to be our last time. And you busted us, but it was going to be our last time anyway. Both of those are lies. Don't believe anything they say. I called BS and she and said she was too comfortable with him, that there was no way this was their first time. She cried and said it was actually their fourth time and they met at a store. I asked her what store, and she told me the name of a grocery store 13 miles away. I asked her when she went there, and she said a month ago. I knew this was BS as well, as we have four grocery stores within five minutes of our apartment that we shop at all the time. I then remembered she had a job handing out food samples at that store last year. I told her, you met him last year when you were out there working, didn't you? She again started crying and said, yes. I asked her if she'd been doing this guy since then. She said no, they had just gotten together a month ago. I again called BS. She swore up and down that was the truth. At this point, I was getting nowhere with her. So I ended the meeting. She again begged me to come home, but I refused, stating I still needed time away from her and would be keeping my kids with me. She wouldn't leave, and I had to call her parents to retrieve her. As I was thinking things through that night, it hit me that everything she said about this guy was a lie. And then it dawned on me that my kids might not be mine, especially the little one. The next morning, I woke early and started researching DNA testing near me. And it turned out there was a lab in a little plaza just a half mile from my parents' home. I stopped over as soon as they opened and spoke with one of the staff. She explained the process and the cost. I next called my insurance company, and they said they didn't cover DNA tests, and he says here in parentheses, over $775 with tax for one test. He must mean for 
both tests for the kids because I saw something online recently that said these tests were like between 250 and 350. So back then maybe they were, you know, like $380 a piece, but still that's a lot of money you have to pay. And it's interesting that the insurance company doesn't cover it. I decided to go forward with the tests and filled out all the paperwork. The appointment was set for later that day and I took my kids back and we all got tested. The technician said the specimens would be picked up that day and I'd have the results back within a week. The technician then explained that the results are court admissible, not like some of the mail-in tests you see today online. I got the test back in a week and was destroyed. My oldest son was mine, but the little man was not. I was heartbroken. Man, that had to just gut the guy, man. That's just terrible. I quickly fell into a really dark place and became severely depressed. All I could think about was him. How could life be so cruel and unfair? Well, let me tell you something, guy. Life isn't necessarily cruel and unfair, but your wife is cruel. She's an evil person. I told my parents about the results and they too were devastated. I explained to them that I would be filing for divorce Good man, you finally manned up here, you found your alpha, and you're moving forward. I like that. And that I wanted to keep this a secret until I confronted my wife. I then got a good lawyer and started the legal process. My lawyer was a real pit bull. She convinced me to not only move forward with the divorce and challenge of paternity, but also pursue the jerk, as she called him, for alienation of affection and paternity fraud. By this point, my wife and I had been apart for nearly three weeks, and she was begging me daily to come back home and recreate our, our family. Of course she's begging you, because she knows that she's losing something great. She's losing her comfort. At the suggestion of my attorney, I arranged another meeting with my wife at my parents' home, and there I confronted her with the DNA evidence. She tried denying it at first. So even with DNA evidence, she's still trying to deny it, saying it was wrong, but then admitted it was true. She then tried guilting me, saying, he's your son. He loves his daddy, and you can't abandon him. You're on the birth certificate, so he's yours. So obviously, she had done some research in her state, and she found out that, oh, if my husband's on the birth certificate, then he's legally the kid's father. He just can't give him up. This lady is evil. She's totally evil. With that, I told her that's not all that matters and then handed her divorce papers. Good for you, my man. I then advised her that I would be filing a lawsuit against her and her lover to get my name removed from the birth certificate and would be suing both of them for fraud. All right, good job. With this, she started begging and pleading again, saying she would never give me a divorce as we were soulmates. Don't believe it. Don't believe her. I shut that right down and told her she better get with her lover and work out a plan or I'd be seeing both of them in court. I told her to leave and she refused. So again, I had to call her parents to come over and get her. With that, I called my attorney to let her know about the meeting. And she said I handled things well. And now we just wait until the hearing. My lawyer told me hopefully she'll wise up and sign the divorce paperwork. And the jerk will voluntarily come forward and accept paternity and settle the AOA lawsuit. Now that's the alienation of affection uh, lawsuit without going to court. He was served papers two days later. What I did next was probably not so smart. My wife had been posting on FB about our situation without being totally truthful. She was telling people I was angry with her and had taken the kids and made her move out to her parents. I was getting messages from everyone asking me what was going on. So instead of answering each one privately, I made a detailed post on my FB explaining why we were separated, who my wife cheated with, and that I was not the father of my youngest. So he put all of that out there in print 
on social media. I mean, I don't blame them, but mm, you might have wanted to hold off until maybe after the divorce before you do that. I have over 1,500 friends online, so news circulated quickly, and I started getting messages of support from everyone. This embarrassed my wife, and she asked if I would take it down, and I told her no. Everyone needs to know the truth. Two days later, my attorney called, and I told her about the post. She scolded me and said that was stupid. Then she gave me good news. She said the jerk's attorney called her and agreed to voluntarily accept paternity if DNA testing proves he is the biofather and also to settle the AOA lawsuit for five grand if I drop the civil suit. My attorney explained this is really an ideal outcome as husbands are normally on the hook unless another man voluntarily comes forward and accepts paternity. Remember that, gentlemen, and that's another reason why you really have to think hard and long before you get married because you don't want to get into a situation like this. Now, am I saying all women are like this? No, but there is a large subset out there that would do things like this. If she has a baby with another man in some states while she's married to you, it's automatically defaulted that you're the legal father. In other states, it really depends on who signs the birth certificate. So that's why you really need to make sure that that woman that you're marrying is someone you can trust 100% because you want to avoid getting in a situation like this poor guy. She went on to explain that getting a settlement in an alienation of affection case in our state is very rare and that I should accept the offer. I did, and we moved forward with getting everything finalized. The paternity case came up first in court. I thought it would be an easy process, but the judge made us jump through multiple hoops. Even though this guy voluntarily came forward, the judge is still making him jump through hoops. After the initial hearing, the judge delayed issuing a decision on the case for 30 days to review all the information and state law before deciding. When we came back for the final trial, the judge asked the jerk and his attorney a series of questions that had my blood boiling. The judge first asked if he knew the child was his before the DNA test confirmed it was. His attorney started hemming and hawing. The judge had to order him to give a yes or no answer, and his attorney answered yes. He then asked when he knew, and the attorney responded that his client knew about a month after birth. Wow. The judge then asked how he knew, and the attorney responded that my wife told him. So it doesn't say in this story, okay, how she knew. But somehow she knew that that baby was not her husband's and it actually belonged to her lover. The judge asked if he ever visited the child. Now listen to this. The attorney responded that he had visited every month for the past four months. The judge then turned to my wife and asked her if what he said was true. She looked down and said that it was. Learning all this made me sick, and again my mind filled with rage, but I kept my composure. In the end, my name was taken off the birth certificate. Congratulations, mister. We then convened a meeting in a side office at the courthouse where we signed the settlement papers, and I was handed the $5,000 settlement check by the jerk's attorney. It was all finally over, and I felt a sense of relief as I walked out of the courthouse. While I felt happy at first, a deep darkness soon filled my heart when I realized my precious baby boy was no longer mine. I felt so terrible that I sat in my car for over two hours before I could muster the strength to drive away. When I got home, I laid in bed and was staring at the ceiling and didn't get up for 12 hours. My first wife was a monster, and by that point, I looked forward to divorcing her and getting the witch out of my life. 
but giving up that baby was the hardest and worst thing I ever had to do. Our divorce was final two months later. We split custody 50-50 and I returned to the apartment and lived there until the lease expired. My ex and the kids lived with her parents. I paid her partial child support and one year of alimony. I know this part is not fair, but I was fine paying it as I wanted to make sure my kid and his little brother were well taken care of. Unfortunately, the saga with my wife did not end there. Instead, she started stalking me right after the divorce and did so for nearly three months. She didn't do anything crazy. It's just that daily she'd show up at my store and sit outside in her car. She'd do the same when I came home. Oftentimes, she'd be in the parking lot sitting in her car or would show up shortly after I arrived. Also during this period, she would text me multiple times a day saying she loved me and the kids miss me. I never responded unless it was regarding my kid. She also sent me two long emails and a 17-page handwritten letter professing her love and sorrow and saying all the things she would do for me if I would just give her another chance. So she quickly came to realize, man, I gave up a good man here and I'm the stupidest woman in the world and I'm going to regret this the rest of my life, so I'm going to try everything to get him back. Don't take her back, my man. Don't do it. She was using my son and the little guy as leverage to guilt me. Again, she's evil which really broke my heart and choked me up every time she mentioned them in her messages. I spoke to her parents, and the three of us tried to rationalize with her, but it didn't work. Things all came to a head one day when I arrived home from work, and she was parked outside my apartment with both kids in the car. Seeing them, I walked over to the car, and she got out holding the baby in her arms and my son by his hand. She said the boys missed their daddy and wanted to see you. I asked her what she was doing. And with that, she started crying, handed me the baby and my son and drove off in her car. I called her parents to tell them what happened and to let them know I had the kids. I told them I'd keep them for a couple of hours and bring them back before bedtime. When I went to drop them off, her parents told me she didn't come home and they can't get a hold of her. She never came home that night and never returned any calls or texts. I wonder where she was. She finally came home at 11 a.m. the following day. Everyone was worried sick about her, thinking she may have harmed herself. That evening, her parents and I had an intervention meeting with her and demanded that she go to therapy. She did, and it seemed to help her as the stocking stopped and she settled down and focused on being a mother. To bring this story to a close, I'm remarried now to a great woman who I met through work. We had a little girl last year and were very happy with each other. Shortly after I got remarried, my ex-wife announced that she was pregnant with a guy she had been dating for just a couple months. Sound familiar? So his ex-wife... Hearing that now he's married, she wants to rush into something. So she goes out and gets another poor sap to impregnate her, and now she's pulled him into her web. They ended up getting married, and he's actually a really good guy. We talk a couple of times a month when I drop off or pick up my kid. He's a good stepdad to my son and the little guy, which is a huge relief to me. And that's something, too, that I've read about is a lot of these men who end up divorcing their wives and they have kids, one of their top worries is, who is my wife going to hook up with? They're just, you know, really concerned about, hey, is this guy going to be a good guy? Is he going to treat my kids right? You know, that has to be a major worry. So this guy probably feels a sense of relief, you know, like he says here, that his wife happened to get with a decent guy. My wife seems to be settled and happy now, too, And I am happy for her. The sad thing is, her relationship with her now husband all started with lies. 
She initially told him I was the father of both kids and that I left her to live the single life. After he started learning more of the truth, she then told him I was not the little guy's father and said she had him with the jerk after we divorced. So you see how she's lying here? Just lie after lie. Eventually, she told him the whole story after her parents outed her lies. How do I know this? Her husband called me one day and asked if we could meet for a beer. I agreed, and that's when he asked me to tell him the truth about what happened between me and my ex-wife, his now wife, since she had changed her story four times. I told him everything, and thankfully what I said matched completely with the last story she told him. He seems happy with her. He loves their newborn son, and he takes good care of my son and the little guy, so everything is all good there. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the jerk has had nothing to do with the little guy beyond paying support. He's a total POS dirtbag. In the end, everything worked out well for me, but I could have saved myself a lot of grief, time, and money if I had just been more cautious. To the young guys out there, learn from my story and don't repeat my mistakes. There are good women out there. You just have to look long and hard to find them and then proceed with caution. Keith. And that's the end of the story, and there were just a tremendous amount of lessons learned in this story. You know, this guy started off making a ton of mistakes, but in the end, he found his alpha, and he handled the situation appropriately. Right up front, he jumps into a committed relationship with this woman he knows nothing about. Big mistake. Number two, he doesn't use protection. And she gets pregnant 11 weeks later. What were you thinking about there, man? Obviously, you weren't thinking with your big head. I'll tell you that. Number three, always DNA test kids. And to kind of soften the blow, you know, for the woman so she doesn't feel offended, have that conversation with her right up front as you're starting to get serious. And like I said, in the end, this guy, once he caught her cheating, he took the appropriate action. He moved forward with the divorce and he worked with his attorney to get him off of the birth certificate. So those are my thoughts on this story. Let me know your thoughts. I'd really like to hear from any of you out there that had bad first marriages. Tell us about it if you're willing to do so in the comments. Also, let us know how you think this guy handled the situation and if you would have handled it differently. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to this great channel, and I will talk to you on the next one.